Today I will talk about our experience in buying a small 50 kilowatt solar farm in Japan and if this was worth it. The decision to buy a solar farm is based on our experience with our rooftop solar. Still, we considered us very new in this business. So therefore we were very nervous about it. If you're interested in my rooftop solar review, please click on the link above and watch the video. We debated the pro and cons. One pro was for example that we have a fixed price we know what we have to calculate and no additional cost it's like a turnkey house another option would be to build it ourselves the price might be cheaper but we have no experience there are two websites one is the megahatsu.com and the other one is tainavipp.com and if you search with Google Chrome, you go to this icon and switch to English. Let's take a look at the categories. Property search, sale request, seminar, maintenance, investment news, what is new at Tainavi, and Tainavi Power Plant Plus. The seminar is a good function. And another thing is also frequently asked questions. So we have a little bit on an overview over the keywords. Maintenance, for example. No? And when we go back to property search, we are looking for solar power low pressure and I go for 18 yen. Over the years the kilowatt hour price dropped but to show you our example we are getting 18 yen. So price I have set no limits. Yield I will not set any limits here. Um, this is about the performance of the solar panel. So the interconnecting date, no. Uh, I will not set any area. Prefecture as well. Newly built, new construction or second hand. Yes, I want new construction. Land contract. This is a complete different story and we had to learn a little bit here and you need your own opinion what you think it's best for you. So use of credit sales, I leave it and online consultation I leave it also. So let's search for okay. Okay, the first one what comes out used solar. I do not want that. So second one is it costs 19.96 million yen, which is approximately 200,000 US dollar. So it's, it's a rough conversion. So the system capacity is 111.52 kilowatt. So this is very important. Um, it's in Ibaraki prefecture and usually you have 50. 50 is allowed what you are selling, but the weather is not consistent and therefore you put more solar on your land so you come up to the 50 kilowatt. I like this. From my experience, what we bought was 88.8 it's perfect so land you can choose between buying and sell or I guess renting huh number of remaining compartments only one solar farm available 
assumed yield 9.5 percent that's a good thing okay low pressure unit selling price 18 yen that's what we wanted and it's scheduled august 21 so that was one example why only 50 kilowatt the reason is if you have more than 50 kilowatt you need to hire a electrical engineer who takes care on your solar power plant this huge megawatt solar plants what you can find overall japan they need their own electrical engineer if you have a 50 kilowatt solar farm you are covered by the maintenance fee in our case it's between 10 to 12 thousand yen every month and if something is going wrong at the solar farm you will contact basically your broker and they will send an electrical engineer to the site so we contacted the broker of course we had many questions over the phone how about the loan and how about the land etc the broker told us that they will take care of for example the land and negotiate with the owner then the next is 20-year contract with TEPCO. The maintenance will be organized with an electrical engineer from them. The loan will be organized from them with a bank and the insurance. So should you buy the land or rent it? In our case, we were really worried that the landlord might be difficult to deal with therefore we decided to buy the land yeah it was 3 million yen at that time was it the best decision i i really do not know we have heard about difficult land on owners before and we just didn't want to deal with that so we made the decision that we will buy land the 18 yen per kilowatt hour was good for us the maintenance fee we agreed also also at that time it was maybe 10,000 yen it increased a little bit then the bank loan yes was also good but they would go only for the solar farm and not for the land the land we needed to pay cash so and then the insurance the plant was at that time not built so we went to the site and looked at it and we were quite happy this is the land Yeah, they built it. I believe it took six to eight months. Finally started in March 2019. An interesting fact was also they gave us a forecast of the estimate what we can expect to earn from the solar farm. And this is a comparison. If you calculate 103, 405 times 18 you come up to 1,861,290 and then you do the same with the second number which is the actual number for 2020 and you come to 1,840,950 so now you take both numbers and uh, subtract the second number and you come up to 20,340 so less yen. So once you own the solar farm, they hand you the key and give you a internet website where you can manage your solar farm. It calls LI. And here you can see all our panels. All is in the green, meaning they're working in the moment. Here you can see the current generation from 11.6 kilowatt. Then the energy today from 211 kilowatt hour and energy lifetime from 187,502 kilowatt hour. If you go to graph, this graph shows you the kilowatt per hour generation per day. 
month and annually. So this chart shows you basically DC and AC. DC in blue and AC is in green. DC is direct current and AC is alternating current. The DC is basically in the solar panel, the current, to explain it uh, easily. And the green one is basically um, the transformed one which goes into the net. No? Just from this year, this is from the last year from 2020 and this is from 2019. You can see we started in March. Yeah. If you go over it, it tells you exactly how much a kilowatt hour you produced. It, uh, for example, for March 2019, 5448.87. In the beginning, we looked sporadic into LI and we didn't check every day. So we checked every day, but after maybe two, three months, maybe every other day, every week, two, three times. And this was a big mistake because I think, I believe it was in July 2019, some of the converter overheated. And with that, the whole power plant shut down and you will lose a lot of money every day and imagine you don't check for one week and the last time you checked Sunday and Monday it goes off the grid that's it so for you have seven days where you do not get money so this happened to us we realized I think one day later that the solar farm is off the grid and called immediately the broker However, there is a way around it. You can set up an email alert so it will inform you when the solar farm is off. Nevertheless, we are checking every day now. Okay, this overheating thing, yeah, it happened five or six times. We needed to install a fan into the boxes and the broker was paying for that. Yes, we didn't need to pay anything. So this was great. Yeah, this was one major thing. And the insurance reimbursed us for the days we lost income. Another thing is grass. So the grass grows and you have to cut the grass on a regular base. We laid out sheets so to prevent the grass to grow. And twice in a year you have to go there and cut it. For us, this is in the area of Tochigi. They are thorn bushes are very painful and snakes so it's a little bit tricky and of course spiders hanging down so that's that's when I have to go with my husband and we cut grass and do all this stuff we do this there two times in a year okay that's another thing wait a minute and third one oh last time when we cut grass and a week later we went there as well because uh, we are not living there and we cut the bushes and we had the grass in plastic and we didn't want the stuff to fly around and we wanted to get some information where to get rid of all this. And then we found out something hit one of the solar panels and was off. We didn't see this I think on LI, I'm not so sure about it. So is it worth the investment? Well, of course, you can make a full business analyze here. This is just a simple overview for me. We have a contract for 20 years, so we can calculate basically what is coming in. I showed you the average last time from around 102,000 kilowatt hour. Multiply this times 20 and then you come up to the 36 million eight hundred nineteen thousand yen you deduct the maintenance and other costs like insurance i deducted five million yen don't forget you have to pay also property tax and from my point of view this is worth it we are small time investor and we're very happy with it don't forget you still have the land at the end of the 20 year contract you have the solar panel on the land and during the years you basically have your own business therefore you can 
uh, get tax returns. This is a whole new discussion. What would have done differently is I think we paid too much for the land, to be quite honest. I was also worried about what happened after 20 years. So after a little bit of research, we found out that, for example, you can sell the used solar panels to another country where they still use it, where there is more sun. Or, I mean, TEPCO will also in 20 years have contracts. I don't think this will be over, so there, this is an opportunity. Or we are selling directly to the neighbors. So I don't think there is a big issue there. So I hope I touched all topics you are interested in buying a solar farm in Japan. If you have any other question, please let me know down in the comment section and I will answer your question. If you like my content, please like and subscribe to my channel and I see you in my next video. Bye!